This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy DeCaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in trucking, in the trades, and really everywhere. We tackle all kinds of topics and work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests, experts, celebrities, and people who are champions for women. I'm Shelley and... I'm Kathy. No topic is not allowed on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with others, and we like to feature experts and celebrities who can assist women in being the very best that they can be. Many of our listeners have struggled with a loved one who has a serious addiction. This can literally rip a family apart. Many family members are left not knowing what to do as they deal with relapses and the ups and downs of a loved one's addictions. Pamela Brinker is a well-respected psychotherapist who has practiced for over 30 years. She's treated thousands of clients and led workshops on many themes that include motivation, grief, mental health, and conscious bravery. She supports the loved ones who are faced with a person's addiction. Her first book, Conscious Bravery, is an Amazon bestseller. Pamela has worked as an integrative therapist and coach. Her transformative approach helps clients and attendees develop skills in living in the present moment, resetting under duress, adapting to change, facing the unknown, and building resilience. Pamela is a staunch mental health advocate, helping others transform difficulties into foundations for strength and compassion as they find gratitude, hope, and freedom in everyday living. Pamela's with us today, and we're looking forward to speaking with her. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you for being on the show with us. Thank you so much. It's a delight to be here with you both and your listeners. You are amazing with what you do. Mm, Thank you. So I guess we could start with how did this all start? I see you got your master's in social work from the University of Denver. You've been doing all kinds of things. You have a lot of different types of therapy that you use for your clients. This is really cool. Thank you. Well, I was a therapist for years and years, Shelley and Kathy, and really wanted to help people transform, to renew, to find their own I didn't call it conscious bravery back then, but that's really what I was trying to help people do, find their unconscious bravery, which means basically being able to do whatever is needed in any given moment, not just have options and intend to do certain things, but to have the awareness that's vibrantly awake that helps us to do the tough things, right? Mm -hmm. So I had been a therapist for years, hoping to help my clients and walking alongside them and watching people succeed and learning myself what worked. But then my uh, my two sons' stepfather, my, my husband, 12 years ago, died from brain cancer. And um, shortly after that, they both turned to each other, but also to substances and alcohol in their grief and pain as the answers to some of what they couldn't handle themselves. And even though we were close, it was just, it just knocked me off my feet, how severe their use became. And in short order, after about three years, they had become addicted to methamphetamines. Oh, no. Oh. So that, that really, those, those three years, you know, initially after my husband passed, I know some of our listeners can relate to this. The severity of that loss was so great initially for me, even though I was prepared for it. And and all of us have losses. So I'm not saying I'm unique, but it was so great for me that I just didn't know what to do at times. And I had these two teenage sons and then they began having mental health challenges. You know, they had severe ADHD. They had impulsivity problems that were getting them in trouble in school and even with the law. And, and I just, there were times in which I said, I just can't do this. And I realized, I remembered what Cheryl Strait, who most of us know wrote Wild, you know, there was that great film that was made about what she wrote. And she also wrote a beautiful book called Tiny Beautiful Things. And in that she says, we parents don't have the luxury of despair. And that somehow graced me to realize I've got to do this. I've got two teenage sons that need me and I've got to be this mom that can stand and 
be the light, you know, I can, I can be an oasis for them. And so I realized there was, wasn't really a protocol about conscious bravery written yet. And I was turning to all kinds of books and workshops and going to different kinds of therapy and trying to do my hikes and walks and all these things, meditate, but I had to put it all together. And so I ended up writing the bravery protocol that I needed 12 years ago. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's amazing that you were able to pull it together to come up with a solution for not only yourself, but other people. Mm. Because people, when they're confronted with the kind of tragedy you had, it takes so much time to recover on your own and to be the strength for your kids. But then when you see them literally destroying themselves and you don't know what to do, I mean, the helplessness is overwhelming. Absolutely. I love that you're speaking to that because so many of us who are listening to the show and and the three of us here, we've been through overwhelm, right? But it has knocked us off our feet. The wonderful thing is that most of us return to standing, you know, we wobble back up, but really, how do we do that? And so I think it's a combination of, we'll call it grace, but also commitment and practice, because there's all this talk these days out out there about, you know, do your affirmations and do your self-care, but how do we motivate ourselves to do that? You know, a lot of, a lot of women who are listening are working 12, 13 hour days, Mm -hmm. sitting, driving truck, and, and it's hard, hard work to focus our attention. So what do we do to, to really guard our radical self-care, you know, and, and I was listening to some of your other shows to drink water, to drink tea and other kinds of things, instead of getting the Red Bull and the things that, you know, give us the quick fix. How do we commit to and find and remember to do these other kinds of things? So mm-hmm. I believe we have to have certain practices in place in the calm moments and train in them, do our bravery training, as it were, so that we can handle the devastations when they come. Part of this conscious bravery is that also taking care of yourself when, uh, gosh, there's the temptation to enable to be codependent. I mean, people want to rescue. And of course, when somebody is entrenched in their addiction, they don't necessarily want to be rescued. Uh, There's so much deception that goes into that. And I mean, it's such a confusing situation. Absolutely. Yes, we have to have the clarity, the presence of mind and heart in, in our whole beings to be able to assess a situation, right? And so, I love that you're bringing this up because part of what I teach and have practiced myself is what I call whole being awareness. So it's more than just mindfulness. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of practices and a lot of, there are a lot of treatment centers that are mindfulness based. And we're always talking about be more mindful or get out of your head and get into your heart. But that's only part of what the newest neurobiology and the newest psychology is teaching us. We're really learning that we want to get into our bodies as well and listen to our intuition. We might not take the advice of our intuition, but we want to listen to it Mm -hmm. and be aware of what we're feeling and be able to befriend all of our experience, befriend not just the the more pleasurable emotions like happiness or even the ones we're more familiar with that might give us some satisfaction like anger, but even the shame, even the despair to make friends with that doesn't mean that we're inviting it to stay. It means we're inviting it to sit down and we're holding space for it. So for me back in the day, 12 years ago, and it's it's been repeated times ever since, I've had to hold space for my despair and say, okay, you're here. Wow. I'm overwhelmed. This is so uncomfortable. I'm with you. And I pause and I breathe consciously into not just my heart, not just my racing thoughts or my despairing thoughts, but into my whole being. And I am aware of the energy. I'm aware of what's going on in the deepest part of myself. And and that's true for our listeners, because I'm sure many people listening are out driving or once you're off work, you've got a little moment to yourself, but then that's when overwhelm can really kick in for some of us, right? We let down our guard and, oh man, all the stuff that's troubling us just starts to overwhelm us. And so that's when, you know, some of my clients, they'll drink three glasses, a whole bottle of wine a night, or turn to stimulants to stay up during the day. And so I say, okay, be aware of that 
that experience you're having that's saying, I can't handle this, or I'm overwhelmed. And just invite it, maybe even put put two arms around yourself, you know, one hand crossed over to your left, left um, arm, your bicep and the left arm crossed over to your right tricep and give yourself a hug and say, here I am. I'm right here with you. Just like we would to our best friend or a child, you know, we wouldn't push them aside and say, get over this, you know? And so, so that's part of what we want to do instead of enabling or managing, we want to be able to have the awareness. So I bunny trailed around a little bit there, but bunny, we want to have the awareness that tells us what's happening in ourselves first, not just what's happening in the other, because Mm -hmm. that's part of what what pe- most people call codependency is that we're so aware of what's going on with the other person. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. That we tend to their needs first, but I'm saying what really works. And this is the rewiring of the brain. The newest research in the psychology field is that when we tune into our whole experience, we can actually change, not just our, we can not just rewire, but we can change generational patterns and we can break out of some of the tendencies that we've had in ourselves and in our families. And we can say, okay, I want to manage, but I'm not going to, I'm going to pause, pause, pause and say, Hey, what's going on to our beloved? Or maybe say, Hey, I'm here with you. What, what's, what are you feeling? And then we allow that space to come in and there's tenderness along with that assertiveness or that desire for action. And that tenderness can be just as powerful as some sort of enabling you know, that we think the enabling is going to provide for us. Isn't it hard for people to identify what they're truly feeling, though, when there's chaos that's around them? And then you have the guilt that can kind of creep in. It's like a shroud, because as a parent, you're going to say, what did I do wrong? Uh, I would think that those are self-destructive emotions that can interfere. You know, I love that you're saying this because they could be, but if we realize that in our human experience, we all feel guilt fairly often, you know, some of us feel more guilt than, than others. We, we have our preferences, the thing, the, the emotions that we tend to feel that beat us up the best. <laughs> and for some of that, that for some of us, that's shame or guilt or despair. If those of us tend toward depression or panic, if we tend toward anxiety. And so we got it. We've got to know ourselves well enough to kind of say, Oh, this is the part of my story. When I start to say, all right, I, I'm feeling anxious. I'm just going to go straight to panic. I'm going to feel overwhelmed and I'm just going to allow my body to take over and my, my heart to race and so yeah. forth. So if we notice that's happening, we can actually, cause I've struggled with anxiety and panic myself. So I'm not just speaking to this from the point of view of my clients, but we can actually use conscious breathing to bring us down if we're panicked or to bring us up if we're depressed that's the beauty of the breath, right? It can yeah. either calm our, our nervous systems or it can bring us up. <laughs> Oxygen brings clarity, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's worked for, for me, um, a few things is one that I, I did before I started working here um, because of my history of uh, intense trauma. Um, mm. I, once I got into the real world, I was, I was in a women's group uh, home I guess recovery home for a total of two years where I lived eat and breathed uh, recovery right so 24 Mm -hmm. 7 and when I got back into the real world well you don't have the counselors that you know at your beck and call until you got to figure things out well I had to learn I self-talk my way through the through the moments through the panic through the anxiety through those minutes but one thing that um, my work nine years ago when I got hired they gave us all um, stop and think cards. And that's their model. That's their safety thing. Stop and think. So when anything that you feel is not right, you just stop and you reassess. You, you just breathe. You just take a minute. Just stop. What, it doesn't matter what you're doing. They don't care. And you just look around and you start. you reassess things. And so because they um, implement that nonstop 100 times a day, Uh, you know, what could go wrong? How bad could it be? Well, it's integrated itself into my own train of thought where when I'm having moments, because even though I have 10 years sober, 
I still, you know, there's still things that hit me some from time to time. Well, I, so not only do I self-talk, but I, I, I stop myself. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just stop, right? Like I stop that, that train of thought that's, that's going a hundred miles an hour um, into the negative dark place. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, back up the boat there, chicky. And then I, I can work my way through it you know, logically, whereas before I started this job and, you know, before I started treatment, um, you just, like you said, you just go racing and you just run with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's very, very beneficial to me, um, uh, in, in my recovery and in rewiring my way of thinking, my way of addressing problems that come to me. And I don't respond like I used to respond because I've learned to retrain my thinking pattern. You know, uh, I had to unlearn a lot of things and then I had to relearn things and then I had to balance it out, you know, figure (laughs) out what works for me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fabulous. And I, and it sounds like you're talking about the pause, right? The power of the pause. Yeah. And, and the conscious decisions and the conscious, you know, thinking about it, it might be like a different little spit different one, what you're you're talking about but i think it's the same really Mm -hmm. it's very very similar the same (laughs) it's yeah it's it's that conscious awareness kathy and shelly that you're talking about you're pausing and for you sounds like you ruminate in your mind a lot and so you need to stop and think and reassess and that's true for so many of us but for others some people over emote you know Mm -hmm. they start emoting and, and despairing or feeling more anxious. And then the thoughts just feed that. So, mm-hmm. so maybe stop and be with your pain too. And because mm-hmm. pain doesn't actually get bigger. If we give it attention, it, it reduces in size. It's funny. It's like a child who's crying. If we say, Hey, you know, what are you crying about? stop that, then they're just going to feel more despairing and despondent yes. and, you know, probably cry harder. But if we say, Hey, come here, Hey, I'm with you, then their, their emotions are going to calm down. So many of us are thinkers. A lot of us are emoters. You know, we feel our feelings really big. Other people get into their bodies and, and they don't even know what they're thinking and they don't even know what they're feeling, but they might have to just go work out or eat mm-hmm. or do yeah. something to yeah. avoid or stuff or, mm-hmm. or try to uh, avoid or, or, you know, deny the pain or to uh, get, find a way out of it. And so we, we want to know what's our tendency. We want to know ourselves well enough to say, what do I tend to do? Oh, here's where I tend to do this. And, and that's the power of the pause you're talking about. Then we can retrain and rewire and reprogram ourselves to, to train in bravery, really, which is basically ultimately to be able to handle the discomfort that we're experiencing so that we don't just try to solve it in the mind or try to escape it, but that we can actually stay with our discomfort and move through it. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. You know, you said something uh, that, that, that just kind of clicked. Um, a lot of people, myself, I'm speaking from my own personal experience, is that I couldn't, you know, that discomfort, I couldn't put a name to the emotion that I was feeling. I couldn't, I didn't know, um, like, uh, I'll say anger. I, I've always said because I was very soft and, you know, I, I've never, I'm not an angry person. And, you know, because I, I associated anger with the direct violence, right? Mm. And so, but it took me a long time to figure out that what I was feeling was in fact anger, but it was coming out in different ways in in I was I was managing to manifest it so that it didn't come out in a violent way but it would come out in a different way so learning to put a name to my emotion was very critical in part of my recovery and um, to this day 
assessing what am I feeling and why am I feeling this way? Like, what is the trigger behind this? And really learning um, who Kathy is and what makes me respond to certain things, right? And, and I think a lot of people, they, they're so busy. I mean, we get so distracted by life and the 10,000 things that are hitting us left, right and center that we forget to get to know ourselves, you know, oh, especially yes. mothers, because we're so busy with, you know, with our children and spouses and family and, you know, soccer games or whatever, right? Homework. And then that we've, we, we're, we're kind of like just floating, just barely scraping by. And then, so how do we find time to really know what we like or don't like, or what we want or what we're feeling and why we're feeling it. And, and then on top mm-hmm. of that, I think there's a whole guilt thing <laughs> that we, yeah. we self Imposed guilt that oh you know that they think it's selfish but no it's not it's self care there's a difference yep right oh you're speaking to two things I love to talk about and first I want to tell you Kathy that I have such tremendous respect for you in your recovery and I have respect for anyone who's anywhere on the continuum you know just reducing the amount of substances we rely upon reducing the amount we're drinking or you know kind of cutting back on eating unhealthy kinds of things and substituting them for, for healthier things. Those are all big moves toward like my healing. chocolate pudding. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sure. Hey, so it's actually good for you. It's yes, it is. Brain. Dark yeah. chocolate. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. So I really have such respect for you and, and you're bringing up this hugely important topic of who am I really? And I talk about that all the time with my clients and I write about it in the book that we are our essence. We're not just who we are as moms, as partners, as spouses, as drivers or as entrepreneurs, whatever, as spokes, spokespersons. We're not even our talents or our, our uh, skills and gifts. Those are things that we have that we do, but that's not who we are. And so when we know who we truly are, that at the deepest core part of us, we are this beautiful self that is filled with kindness and love and filled with bravery. And all we need to do is cultivate that, develop it over time in little steps, A to B to C to D. We become better at loving. We become more consciously brave the more we practice. Even in the trenches, we practice, or we practice in the easier moments, just as we do in relationships with love. We become slightly better a little, little by little, right? And so when we can do that, we can revert back to knowing, oh, this is who I am. I am this being. I'm the being part of my humanness. <laughs> and I don't have to feel like I'm a failure if I if I fall back to, um, you know, eating a whole bag of cookies and tons of chocolate some night, you know, I can say, okay, that's, that's what I did to self-soothe that night. But hey, today's a brand new day, brand new moment. I know who I am and I'm going to proceed forward in a new place. But, see, that's the thing that I think where people get stuck because they get so um, enveloped in their feeling of unworthiness, right? And that, yeah. that's a common denominator in all mm-hmm. in addicts, alcoholics, whatever, um, is that feeling of unworthiness. And when the minute they do something, they, they automatically, they revert back to that, oh, I never get it because, you know, I'm not good enough and I'm this and I'm that. And if they could only learn to um, accept, okay you know what that failures and mistakes it's part of success like i i failed so many times but that, that's what it takes to in order yeah. to take that next step then it's okay right that it doesn't mean you're unworthy that doesn't mean you're 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 uh you're no good it's just okay and it's okay to, it's it's part of the next step right mm-hmm. that's it mm-hmm. that's it so that, that feeling of unworthiness how do you how do you what do you tell clients because i'll, I'll give you an example my best friend who was in recovery with me um, back in 2011, 12, um, she had eight and eight half years clean and sober. And she was the most beautiful light I have ever seen. Like I shine bright. She shined, she shone even more. Like she was oh, like unbelievable. <laughs> and um, she was doing, uh, traveling the world with Salvation Army and doing all sorts of talk on, on the human trafficking and just, you know, but forgot to self care. And she ended up relapsing and, 
um, that feeling of unworthiness and lack of purpose. And uh, she just, she never could get over it. And she ended up dying uh, mm. in my house a couple of years ago. And it's, it's, I was trying to help her and give her the tools, the same tools that we had in recovery and give her the new tools that I had learned over the years and assist her in sh- showing her how beautiful and how worthy and how her impact globally was profound, but she just couldn't see it for herself. And I think that's a big thing in addiction, right? Mm -hmm. With with anybody in addiction. Mm -hmm. And can I just ask, what would you, what would you recommend to somebody who is got that same problem? Because I know Mm. it's out there. I know lots of, lots of people. Oh, it's thousands. You're asking maybe one of the biggest questions after 32 years of being a therapist. This is probably the most universal problem that all of the folks I've ever worked with have had is at the bottom level, we believe that we're either unworthy, unlovable, or we're going to, or people are going to stop loving us. We're going to lose everyone. We're going to be alone, those kinds of things. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, I would answer this question. It's a beautiful question that there's a hub to our wheel and the hub is our worthiness, right? And how do we, how do we start with that? Well, first we commit to it. We say, I don't like the feeling of beating myself up all the time. So I'm going to commit to believing, even if I don't totally believe it yet, I'm going to commit in faith (laughs) that I am worthy, just like my best friend is worthy or my child is worthy. Mm -hmm. Right? So we start with a commitment to it. And then the other spokes on that wheel are that we have got to protect our happiness. So for me, there have been so many times when I woke up at first thing in the morning and my mind raised, my heart dropped, you know, I felt like, oh my God, what's going to happen today? Is one of my sons going to, but both of my sons have been homeless at different times without my wanting it to happen. It was, they chose that over recovery, you know, and that's true for so many as, as your story too, Kathy. Yeah. And they've been, they've just, I, I've literally collapsed sometimes uh, in the office during the day when I was completely overwhelmed. And so I had to develop practices that began first thing in the morning to, to guard my worthiness. And so I would do gratitude prayers right in the bed, you know, and say, I'm not putting my feet on the ground until I can say, okay, I've got a roof over my head. My son may be alive. He may not, but if he's alive, I'm going to do whatever I can to send him love, love with boundaries and compassion. And then I would turn that compassion around to myself and say, okay, right here, this moment, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to walk around because affirmations really, it takes about 2000 repetitions of affirmations. Like I'm worthy. I'm loved. I'm lovable for us to really believe them. But if you move them into your body, If you do a moving mantra, so you walk around and say, hey, I'm right here. I love myself. Our bodies start incorporating that body memory and we start to believe it more more quickly and sooner. So that's another piece. And then another spoke really is is to have empathy, have empathy for ourselves. So we might even say, I feel so unworthy right now. Oh, wow. There's a part of me that feels unworthy. That's the part of my story that goes to this. I'm going to bring compassion to that. And then maybe we bring in humor too, because all these things work together. We can start at any spoke on this wheel. You know, a lot of us feel like when we're despairing, we don't have the right to laugh or the right to have any joy, right? Mm -hmm. But it's it's so important to be able to laugh with a friend. And so we might say, okay, on my list of things I'm going to do today is I'm going to text a friend or I'm going to call somebody. And then we might want to get out in nature and let nature speak to us. Because if you, if anyone is listening and they don't know the healing power of nature, I hope you'll try it out for a week and just look at the sky. If you're having a rough moment, look at the sky, watch leaves turning in the wind, breathe in consciously into your whole being, breathe out and exhale and connect to the world around you. So nature can be rejuvenating, but really what we're talking about is how to renew, correct? So many of us forget that we have to renew. And so we end up feeling unworthy because we just put ourselves by the wayside and we are busy doing our jobs, making our money, being moms, being best friends, helping everybody else, but forgetting about ourselves. So I call it radical self-care. You know, (laughs) we have to do radical self-care with loving awareness. Do you think it's harder for women to do that than men? Because we have to be so much to everybody and we're so used to nurturing. 
And in the case of, of a loved one who has an addiction, you want to fix it, <laughs> uh, but you can't. And self-blame, the guilt, the feeling of being unworthy, does that seem to be more women suffering from that than men or not? Absolutely. What, what do you think, Shelley? I think so. I think that mm -hmm. we're quick to blame ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I respect you. And, and I've seen that in women because I've had a pretty much equal practice of women and men over all the years. And, and so since we do tend to be more spatially aware, we're also more aware of our own feelings and thoughts. And because we we err that way. It's called the negative bias in the brain and in the heart. <laughs> we want to go the extra mile to taking care of ourselves and bringing in that self-love. And, and it, it's not just self-love. That's another thing that so many of my clients, and I'm sure your listeners do too, we think we have to resource from within so much, but there's this, there's this practice I teach called the triad of connection, where sure enough, we tune into ourselves and we're aware and we try to build our own self-love, but we also do what the three of us are doing right here. Now we connect mm -hmm. in authentic connection with other beautiful beings. And we don't forget about that. We prioritize it because there's this magical, mystical thing that occurs when we're present with someone else and they hold space for our pain, or we just laugh together, or we can be present for them. And there's this reciprocal energy that exchanges, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is that we want to connect to something that's greater. I mentioned nature, but it can be, can be God. It can be the universe. It can be the Tao. Call it whatever you like, source. But we cannot, we will become depleted if we try to resource from within solely. We have got to rely upon something outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors, coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. I think sometimes people also try to maybe get solace from outside stimuli, which is why maybe people would drink or they overeat or they shop or they watch TV to obsessive levels because they can't find who they are within. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think it, they have to have external rewards somehow to make up for that hole? Absolutely. We need both. We do need outside stimuli. And so there's a bulk of knowledge out there that says, oh, just forget about that. Try to rely upon yourself and go inside to your soul. Well, we need, we need, we're in, we live in the 3D world. You know, yeah, we live right yeah, here yeah. with our feet on the ground. And so we've got to put our boots on the ground and maybe do something that's a slightly healthier choice. And that's where A to B to C to D correct? We just, we want to maybe say, okay, I'm not going to drink a bottle of wine, or I'm not going to drink three Red Bulls, or I'm not going to take some stimulants. I'm going to instead drink some, and this might sound kind of corny, but, but I'm going to take some green tea into this truck stop. And I'm going to fill my warm water bottle with some green tea or something else. Like I, I, became a beverage queen, I call it. <laughs> Back when I was really struggling, I started drinking coconut water, really good coconut water mixed with Zevia ginger ale. And I love it. It's great. I tell my clients and they love it too. Like you just take, you put in half a glass of coconut water, really good coconut water that you like, and then mix some Zevia ginger ale. It, you might not, not even like ginger ale, but try it. I tell you, it's, it's the bomb and it tastes great. And so that's something we can even put that in a wine glass and feel like we're treating ourselves and it, we can have that same celebratory uh, approach to relaxing, you know, but we often think that the relaxation comes from the substance or the food or whatever 
or the behavior, the shopping, but that, that fades right in about 20 minutes usually. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so those things don't really last. We want to find things that are soothing, that are self-soothing practices that last, that we can embed into our practice and we can do freely and easily. The, some of the best advice I've gotten over the years was be kind to your mind mm, so that, like that when, when I'm struggling for whatever reason, just, you know what, just take it easy on myself, be good to myself. And even though, because I'm very mm. demanding on myself, because I, I mean, I have a lot on the go and I'm trying to be disciplined and, you know, do this and this and this. And when I'm not, I'm hard on myself. So that's when I remember, be kind to your mind. It's okay if you don't hit the gym every single day at 3 a.m. before I go to work. It's a, mm. You can miss one. You can go in the evening. You can, it, 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 learning to incorporate new habits is not easy. And I have to tell myself that, right? And so be kind to your mind, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Beautiful. And, I love yeah. that. Be kind yeah. to your mind. What a great, what a great mantra really to share or an affirmation yeah. that, that f- people listening can embody mm-hmm. and maybe walk around and say, I'm going to be kind to my mind this moment. Yeah. Yes. Love that. I love that, Kathy. That's mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, the, some, some new friends have made of mine have made t-shirts and they say kindness and bravery, something like that, like kind, that. kindness and bravery. And those two things go together. And don't mm-hmm. you too, I don't know if you found this, Shelly and Kathy, that, that seeming opposites go together, like being kind to our mind. That doesn't come naturally to us, right? Because we're most of no. us think that our minds are kind of our enemy. But, but if we bring kindness to our minds, then it's easier to bring kindness to our bodies. And it's actually easier easier to, to jump into the bravery that's needed in that situation. So kindness or, or even tenderness or compassion and bravery or assertiveness can go together. You know, Hmm. these principles work with most any kind of obstacle in life, not just somebody, you know, say a a woman is dealing with a a family member or a loved one with addiction, just Mm -hmm. general obstacles because life throws us (laughs) curveballs. And this gives us the ability to be able to think on our feet and have the confidence. I I think that's that's the big word, isn't it? Mm Self-confidence in a new way. Yes, love that. The self-confidence is is really what most of us want, and we want to be happy. And so we need to have practices that help us build that into our everyday life. And it's not something that we can just wish into being, you know, I say that bravery doesn't come with the wave of a wand. It's not magic. And so anything we do works toward the self-confidence that we're trying to develop. Mm -hmm. Anything we do matters every, every little step along the way. (laughs) <laughs> is important. And even like you were saying earlier, Kathy, our mistakes, I learn more from my, my mistakes than I do from my successes. So our mistakes matter. That's when we say to ourselves, wow, never doing that again. Right? Yeah. Oh my God. Learning, learning equipment, operating equipment. The, mm-hmm. if I were to be any other person, the amount of mistakes I learned operating the greater, which is the bigger than a highway tractor trailer. It's so big. The blade is 23 feet long, three feet high. It, one, one joystick has 12 functions. The other joystick has 14 functions to get everything to work and to articulate and move. And I mean, it requires effort and the amount of mistakes I've made is like, Oh my goodness. Mm. But, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I learned to through, through work is to, to laugh at my mistakes because everybody else laughs at my mistakes too. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and, and my team, they're so good at teaching you that making mistakes is okay. Mm-hmm. Like when I first started this job, I would hide all my mistakes because I didn't want people to see them. I didn't want people to, to see that imperfectness. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I would, I would not tell anybody the thing, the ridiculous, stupid things that I would do, but this, this job, you make a mistake, you got 500 people that see it and know it. So mm-hmm. you have no choice. But to either you cower and you, you don't take the, 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 the joking or you can just, you know what, that was the stupidest, the stupidest thing I've ever done. I don't know why. Did you see that? <laughs> or or you, mm. you, I, I'm now, so when I make a mistake, 
I'm the first one to say, oh my God, did you guys get a look at that? Holy crap. <laughs> You're so aware so, and honest. Yeah. Love that so, because that connects to- my mistakes, it mm-hmm. gives, it empowers me. Mm-hmm. I'm not cowering inside trying to hide it. Now I, I'm wide open, right? And, and, and it changes that, that, that whole rewiring in my brain. It, it changes things by, because I, I, I'm able to own it. Brilliant. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, but I was getting excited. I was thinking the same word that you were thinking that if we're empowered when we can be honest, we can be transparent and we can also yeah. break the stigma that you were talking about, Shelly. We're all carrying around so much stuff. There's intergenerational mm-hmm. trauma, there's yeah. secrets in our families, but if we can start busting out of our own secrets and, and maybe not, we're not like trying to sing sing what's happening, tell somebody else's story inappropriately or anything like that. But if we can see that our mistakes sort of go with the secrets that we keep Mm -hmm. and start unveiling ourselves a bit, unmasking is what I like to call it. So very true. I do too. That's great. Mm. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. Pamela, you draw from a lot of different types of therapy. I find this very interesting. You've got somatic experiencing therapy, dream work, EMDR, which is eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing, along with meditation and yoga. All of these are marvelous. I'm not sure what all of these are. Um, somatic experiencing therapy and EMDR, our listeners may not be familiar with. Sure. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I did EMDR and it worked. <laughs> Wonderful. So EMDR stands for eye movement, desensitization and reprocessing. It's really uh, also called bilateral processing. So it's the same thing we do when we uh, move our right arm forward and our left arm back or lift our right arm up and put our left arm down and then cross it across our hearts and left arm up, right arm down. So you might have heard of it as uh, brain gym in the schools. So that bilateral processing is part of what activates both the right and the left sides of our brain, which we need to be able to, as you were saying earlier, Shelly, be able to do what's needed and kick in and and make a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of why I love um, not just EMDR, but anything. I teach really simple cross crawl exercises to my clients, you know, just lifting up one right, your right foot and touching it with your left hand, lifting up your left foot and touching it with your right hand, crossing across your body. Those are things anyone can do anytime if they're just getting out of their truck and moving their body around. You know, you can do that walking around a bit and you can reactivate part of the brain that is struggling to look for answers. Then all of a sudden you might relax a little bit more or different solution might come to you if you're reflecting, say, for example, upon something that's going on in your life. So that's part of why I became an eclectic and um, integrated psychotherapist, because I don't believe that any one particular practice works for everything. So that's a little bit of the EMDR or the bilateral processing. And as you know, Kathy, it definitely works because you're, you're, you're accessing parts of the brain that have been kind of tucked away yeah, and you're yeah. allowing them to give you answers. So I'd encourage listeners to, to look up EMDR or bilateral processing. Mm-hmm. And then somatic, uh, you were asking about somatic inquiry. I know it's mm-hmm. kind of a lot of big words. Somatic just means in the body. Right. And when we inquire, we ask what's happening in my body. For example, right now, if, if the three of us just tune into your body, what do you notice? Mm-hmm. 
you might notice your throat is tight or you might notice your shoulders are, are hurting. And I hope our listeners can just tune in for a second and ask, what's happening in my body? That's somatic inquiry. You're just asking, hey, body, talk to me. And since the body talks, the body also has wisdom, just like our friends who talk to us and carry around a lot of concise answers and have wisdom inside of them. Our bodies have wisdom. And so if we tune into them, they can give us data about what's happening and they can say, hey, you're feeling and really tired and overwhelmed, you need to do something to bring yourself up and stimulate. Or, you know, you're feeling so, so excitable, you're almost frenetic, let's bring it down a notch. And so that body awareness can help us know what's needed. And it's easy to know what we need to do. But then the next question is, how do we actually do it? But we can talk about that if you like. <laughs> Well, we don't have a lot of time left. We'd love to do that, but um, <laughs> I think that maybe our listeners could reach out to you. Certainly, you have Conscious Bravery. That's a book that you released, and you have a series. Am I correct that listeners could I, read? Not yet. I'm okay. writing the, the series, but the, the first book, Conscious Bravery, is available. Thank you so much for saying that. It's on Amazon, and then they could go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. I've got videos and stuff up there. Excellent. And my website, too. Where do, where do people find you? What are the websites and the locations on social media? Right. The website is just PamelaBrinker.com. And there are lots of blogs and all kinds of resources on the website that would be helpful. And then on social media, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. Basically, just look up my name and it should come up. It's slightly different on each one, but my, my website's the main place to find me. And then the YouTube channel, which is uh, Be Brave with Pamela Brinker. I love this. Thank you. I love your insight. Oh, your thank you so much. I have to ask, how are your boys? Oh, thanks so much for asking. They're both doing really well. You know, they're finding their way, but they're both mm -hmm. doing really well. And they, they yeah. practice some of these things. You know, they really like to breathe consciously. So it helps them in the moment to just kind of come into the here and now, you know. So they've learned a lot of these things and do them themselves. And they're coming along. Excellent. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, my daughter, too. She's she struggled mm -hmm. as well and stuff. And so she's just fine. She's 28. She's just finally coming along and Mm. taking some of the advice and learning and trying new things. And, oh, my God, I'm so proud of her because I know mm. the struggle, right? I, I, I've been it. And she's seen me struggle, so I get it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I, yeah. yeah, I really, I hope she, she, I hope she feels proud of herself for doing that because that's, that's a real acknowledge, a real accomplishment. <laughs> really yeah, is. no, she yeah. is. She is Tw one day at a time, one step mm -hmm. at a time, one hour at a time, one mm -hmm. minute. Baby <laughs> steps. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. right. This oh. is wonderful, Pamela. You are an inspiration. Oh. I love your insight. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. That's such a beautiful compliment from you. I respect you so much and all your listeners. And I really hope that this helps. And please reach out to me if you if there's any way I can help if you need anything. Do you work with clients remotely? You know, I do, but my practice is full. So right now, the best way for people to reach out to me is through my website or send me an email. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Wow. Wow. This has been great. I think we'd love to have you back, maybe to focus on a particular area or something. Oh, um, thank you. That'd be a delight. I would yes. really appreciate it. This oh, yes. because I mean, I could talk to you for another hour. Easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Me same. Too. You yeah. you know, you two provide such great value to your listeners. And again, I just can't thank you enough for everything you do. I was listening to several of your episodes and you just have amazing guests and and i hope our listeners will really go away with feeling like you're really treasured you're a beautiful being and i hope you can find your worthiness thank you so much pamela mm -hmm. that's a wonderful yeah. compliment mm. yeah this has been great my pleasure again i'm really grateful to talk with both of you and everyone here you've been listening to women road warriors with shelly johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Thank you for listening to another great interview on tncradio.live. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNCRadio.live and its partners. 
for inquiries, write us at info at tncradio.live.